when the Buddha teaches how to focus on feelings as you meditate, there are four steps. You're focused on the breath, and you learn to breathe in a way that gives rise to a sense of rapture and refreshment. That's the first step. The second step, you just breathe in and out, giving rise to a sense of pleasure. The third is that you breathe in and out, being sensitive to mental fabrication, in other words, feelings and perceptions. The perceptions here are the images you hold in mind. And the fourth step is to breathe in and out, calming mental fabrications. Now, his main explanation is designed to focus on how to give rise to a sense of pleasure and then refine that pleasure, give rise to a sense of energy, and then refine the energy. So you have a calming effect on the mind, to get the mind into good, strong concentration. But you can also use the same four steps to deal with feelings of pain. The first two steps correspond to a John Lee's recommendations that when you have pain in the body, you don't focus there right away. Before you're ready to focus on the pain, you have first have to develop a sense of a foundation outside of the pain where you feel secure. So you breathe in and out in a way that gives rise to a sense of fullness, refreshment. You breathe in and out in a way that gives rise to a sense of pleasure someplace in the body. So you know that you have a good place to run away to when you're starting to analyze pain and it gets too much for you. You always have your safe place to go. And sometimes you find that by Focusing on another part of the body, you actually lessen the pain. And John Fuhrman told me that when he was a young monk, he suffered from headaches. And he found that by focusing down on the base of his spine, and thinking of the breath going out of the base of his spine down into the ground, reduced a lot of the pressure up in his head. So that can have that effect sometimes. Other times it's simply you've got a good place to hide out while the pain continues. And you stay there until you get a sense of security there, a sense of solidity, a sense of belonging. And that's when you're ready to look into the pain. This is when you go to the next two steps, which correspond to Ajahn Mahabha's teachings on how to deal with pain. Because he said that the problem of physical pain is not so much the pain itself, it's the perception that you use to pull the pain into the mind. so that. A, Physical pain gives rise to a mental pain, which is not necessary. So this corresponds to being sensitive to mental fabrication and then calming it. You try to look into the perceptions you have around the pain. Is the pain the same thing as your awareness? Do you feel that it's invaded the range of your awareness? Is it the same thing as the body? When there's a pain, say, in the knee, is the pain the same thing as the knee? You may have a perception someplace in the mind that actually tells you that. But you can call that into question. Remind yourself that the sensations of the body are made up of the four properties, earth, water, wind, and fire. But the pain is something else. It's none of those properties. It's like it's a different frequency, like the frequencies of radio waves. You can put your radio in one spot and pick up different stations, and they're all coming through the same spot. And the reason you can tell them apart is because you focus on one frequency rather than another. So they can inhabit the same spot, but they're, they're different. It's the same with the physical properties and the pain. They may be in the same spot, but they're on a different level. If you can see them as different, if you can see the pain also as different from the body and the mind is different from the body, you separate things out like this. It's a lot easier to be with the pain. You can also ask yourself, do you see the pain as a solid block? If you look carefully at the pain, you see that it comes and goes. One of John Mahabhava's recommendations is you try to chase down the, the spot where the pain is sharpest. In other words, show that you're not afraid. And when you're not afraid of the pain and you're investigating like this, you, d you become a moving target. The pain can't catch you. But you also see that the sharpest spot keeps moving around. It's not the same all the time. This alerts you to the fact that the pain is arising and falling away in very quick moments. When you hold that perception in mind, it's a lot easier to do with the pain. And then you can ask yourself, when the moments of pain arise, do they come at you or are they going away? 
you look carefully, they're going away. It's like sitting in the back of one of those old station wagons where the back seat faces the back. Someone else is driving down the road, you're facing back. Anything that comes into the range of your vision is already going away. So it's not coming at you. You're not feeling threatened by it. You're not feeling oppressed by it. it as soon as you see it, it's going, going, going. You hold that perception in mind. Again, it makes it a lot easier to be with the pain. And one of two things can happen as a result. Either the pain actually does go away, in which case your present perception was actually maintaining it. Or it doesn't go away, but you're, you can be with it but with a sense of being separate from it. And this is what I said, is how you gain discernment, is just see things as separate, the things that the mind used to glom together, to glue together. You begin to see it really are individual moments. And when you cut them down into individual moments like this, they're a lot more bearable. You're not carrying them around. Because that's another perception we often have. You think about how long the pain has been going on, and you wonder how much longer it's going to be. And that's like taking all the future and all the past and weighing down one little present moment with it. Of course it can't hold, bear up. Or in a John Lee's image, it's like plowing a field, and you've got a bag, and as soon as the dirt falls off the plow, you put it in the bag. And of course you're going to get weighed down. As the dirt falls off the plow, you just leave it there. The pain that's there in the past, it's there in the past. It's not oppressing you anymore right now. As for the pain in the future, it's not here yet. Focus simply on the pain right now. Hold that perception in mind. And you find it's a lot easier to live with the pain. Because that's what the, the Buddhist skill is all about, learning to live, live with pain but not be pained by it. After all, the Ajans lived in the same human world that we live in, the same world with the same problems. But they didn't carry the pains around, as in that question that Ajahn Sawat once asked. He pointed over to Mount Palomar, across the valley. He asked the lay people there, is that mountain heavy? And nobody dared answer. They knew when Ajahn asked a question like this, it's not an ordinary question. So they waited for him to answer. And so he gave the answer. So if you pick it up, of course it's going to be heavy on you, but if you don't pick it up, it's not heavy on you. Even though it's heavy in and of itself, it's not heavy on you. And that's what matters. We can't straighten out the world so there's no pain in the world, but we can learn how to live with the pain without taking the pain on us. When the Buddha's image, you're shot with one arrow of pain, but you learn how not to shoot yourself with other arrows. And the pain of just the one arrow is, is bearable. And just one arrow is a lot easier to pull out. If you have a lot of arrows, then it gets very complicated. So leave it at just the one arrow. You can learn how to live with pain, but not be pained by it.